You ready? I always. <laughs> All, right. All right. Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. Today I am super excited to be back down in Athens, Georgia with Dr. Alan Armitage. He's brought me to one of the most spectacular private gardens I have ever laid my eyes on. We're going to meet the owner soon. Uh, so that's exciting. And you have a history with this garden. So. <laughs> well, it's good to be with you again, Jim. I tell you, th 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 we, what, what we have to understand about this whole gardening thing, it's, it's a love, it's a passion, but oh my, it can be spectacular. Yeah, it is. And where we are here in lovely Athens, Georgia, and you're getting right. to be a, getting to be a, a regular, this a is regular like my, here. It's my second home, second or third home. Mobile <laughs> might be my second home, and now Athens my third. But well, yeah. we're, we'll make it your second pretty soon yeah. because there's a ton of gardens here. Yeah. We People don't realize what a garden community Athens is, right. and uh, where we're standing here is but one of the most fabulous gardens you're going to see. And uh, this is the garden of Tom and Ram Giverson, yeah. and we're going to meet Ram pretty soon. Yes. But oh, what, what a ball we're going to have just showing people this garden. Uh, it's amazing, and this will be a, abri a very abbreviated version of this. I'd love to come back. Hopefully, she'll welcome us back. Ho hopefully, I do it enough justice that she'll welcome us back. <laughs> but uh, so you, you actually brought students. So one of the things I did in my classes when I did plant ID, it's, mm -hmm. it's you can do it on a screen or whatever, but mm -hmm. I brought the students to real gardens. Right. And so I would make a list of plants that are in this garden. The students would come, we'd walk around, and, and we'd but, meet the gardeners. Right. Uh -huh. And they loved it because you're in a real garden with real plants, with real gardeners. Right. And they learned more oh, than yeah. I could ever teach them with a slide right. or, or any kind of thing like that. So it was great. And Ram was just so wonderfully uh, courteous and just opened up everything. They would come back here with their boyfriends, girlfriends, mothers, <laughs> right. fathers. I mean, they probably even got married in this garden, well, <laughs> right, I know. Right. But they actually had to learn everything first. And yeah, then, yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. Then, then they could show off. They could show <laughs> off uh, yeah. Yeah, in there. So I'm going to let um, Dr. Armitage kind of lead us around. I'm going to carry, I don't have my camera person with me today, so I'm going to carry the camera person around, follow him around. He can point out some things, and then we're going to introduce Ram and let her show you show you show you more and talk about how this garden has evolved well everyone let's go for a walk uh, uh, of course it's november in athens georgia and uh, where we live in north georgia here we get four wonderful seasons and it's nice and chilly this morning took off my ski jacket so i'm a little bit a uh, little bit chilly but uh, you can see when we look at the garden uh the beautiful fall color we get here as well this may not be uh the mountains of North Carolina, but it's certainly uh, pretty darn good for us. So let's walk around and I'm gonna show you a garden that um, Ram and Tom have been working on for a long time, but Ram is just crazy as heck and wait till you meet her. But as we go through, you'll see the, uh, you know, the wonderful spotted foliage uh, uh, of the acubas. You'll see a ton of azaleas. Uh, we'll just walk around this beautiful path uh, see a, a bunch of evergreens, of course, and, and some fabulous trees, but I'm going to take you down because what everybody loves in a garden is color. And it's November, so most of the color we're getting here now is from the foliage. And green is a color, I may add. Uh, so <laughs> when, when we're going through here, all of these are the potential flowering plants for the spring, and we hopefully will be back later on. But listen, this is what gardening is. It's not only a beautiful spot to walk around. It's not only a passion that we can't get enough of. It is looking forward to something. You can't go anywhere in this garden without looking forward to what it's going to do in the spring or what it's doing right now. And so when I plant a bulb in the fall, I look forward to it in the spring. When I plant my Japanese maples, not only do I get a beautiful tree, look at the color. So we're going to do some fabulous uh, walkabouts here. The Japanese maples, uh, not sure if this is blood good or what it is. Certainly down here is waterfall, one of my favorites. Uh, so the waterfall Japanese maple here uh, is kind of like a waterfall. And if you put that near water as well, it even makes it look twice as good. But, you know, the form, the function, and the foliage. Pretty hard not to, uh, not to love it. And all the Japanese maples at this time of year are looking great. You know, the gardenias with the foliage and the crotons and the cypress and the, and the, and the camisiparis, they all look great right now, but they're just the elements of the garden. 
it's the entire garden that makes us so, uh, so keen to keep doing this thing. When I brought my students here, of course, they had to learn all this stuff. <laughs> so they had, to, they had to really take notes and learn it. But, you know, as I say, learning when you're in a garden like this, uh, it makes it a little bit easier. Uh, there's still a lot of plants to learn, a lot of names to learn. But they would come back with their, as I say, their, their, their family or their boyfriends and girlfriends. And they would come around this corner and uh, <laughs> wouldn't Ram find them in the swing. Uh, and, and I tell you, let's face it, if you're a rocker like I am, there is no better place in the garden than to be on a swing surrounded by beautiful trees, under stories of beautiful ground covers, uh, evergreens, deciduous plants. And I love the fact that the garden is just a wee bit messy. Uh, I, I think gardens should be messy, especially at this time of year. If we clean up every single leaf and every single little bug that's around, eh, we're not really doing any favors to anybody, nor are we doing any favors for our backs. So let's enjoy some of this kind of outstanding mess. Uh, but when I say that, I say in all due respect, this is not a mess at all. It's a beautiful garden. So we're at a kind of a junction in the garden here. Uh, you know, if you've been with Jim and I before, I mentioned that if you, if you divide a garden in half, you multiply it by two. In other words, if you make little rooms here and there, the garden seems a whole lot bigger than just one view. Well, here I am, there's a junction here, there's a room down where we came from. You might come down a little further and you'll see that there's a path taking off down here where you see some beautiful camellias still in flower, some fothergillas and some maples, etc. down that path. And so there's a whole nother room down there. And by the way, there's great places to sit down there as well. Uh, <laughs> sitting shouldn't just be ornamental. You should actually be able to do it every now and then. So um, sometimes as gardeners, we, we put out these lovely benches where we never have time to sit in them. But then again, as um, Jim is showing, as he shows through all these various little rooms, we have another path this way. So, and then after that path, there's two or three more paths. So we've divided the garden in half and multiplied by two. We've actually multiplied by 10 here in this garden. So as you walk into this garden, I'm showing you the big picture, but let's look at some of the little pictures. You know, the plants are the congregation. The garden is your church, okay? So there's a whole lot of congregates here, but I love it when we fill the ground. You know, again, I've worked, talked with Jim about this. My own garden is like this. I don't believe anything I read except those things I write, of course. But uh, this whole two foot apart or one foot apart for a plant, the heck with it. Put them together. Like down here, there's sweet box or sarcococa, which is evergreen and looks fabulous, some ferns. And then you come down here, you'll see some moss growing between the rocks. That's just nature speaking. I mean, Ram probably encourages it, but the fact is, if you're fortunate enough to have moss in the garden, don't go around killing it. It's great stuff. So again, as you walk through here, here's some Mondo grass. And this is great because you can walk on it uh, and it's inexpensive to buy if you're looking for it then it'll just do its own thing and it'll find a place to grow. You'll see hellebores, you'll see epimedium, barrenwort, uh, you'll see Solomon seal, you'll see Chinese um, uh, uh, bloodroot going through here. So, you know, it's November. So some of the things look a little sad, but just think something to look forward to. All this stuff is going to look so fabulous as, uh, as you know, winter's coming, and spring is coming, and, but it, uh, to me, it doesn't get much better than this. And I love the fact that is maybe I don't want a whole lot of Chinese bloodroot. Maybe I don't want a whole lot of that because it's going to take over the world to be sure. But I mean, this garden, it does its thing. If you have a tiny garden like I have, I probably won't put a lot of this in because I don't have the room to let it spread. But, you know, here's a seedling Japanese maple, some variegated box, particularly good plants. And uh, this is the units that make up the garden. 
This is your congregation. Is this not working? Oh, sorry, I didn't. Everything's good. Everything's good. Okay. This is fun. So we've been walking through this spectacular garden, but this garden just doesn't appear like manna from heaven. There's somebody that is working in the garden and making the garden what it is. And that somebody, of course, is my very, very good friend, Ram Giberson. And Ram, you've been doing this for a while. I say you've met all my students and they met you. We've had such a good time. What, tell me how long you've been doing this and why and when you started this. Okay, I'm happy to. Uh, before I do that, I'd say a couple of things. Uh, today is a great day because I, I have Jim uh, and, and Dr. A is here. They are the most <laughs> knowledge and create so many things to share with many people. And uh, Dr. Amitabh here uh, brought the student here to teach for so many, so many years. And because of that, they inspired me to learn. Before then, I was kind of, well, who care? <laughs> I'm just going to plan what I want, you know? You tell me I can't put it in a shape, I'll plan it in a shape. But he taught me the plan need what it needs. Uh, um, and I'm so appreciative that uh, Jim Penham, which is operating the camera, and uh, Dr. Ellen Amatut is here. So I'm so happy. All right, okay, pleasure now, indeed. So talk to us now. Now I'm going to share to you all, and, and welcome uh, to this garden. Uh, my name is Ram, my husband is Tom Gibson. We moved here in uh, 19, 1991. Long time ago. <laughs> but uh, before we moved here, I tell my husband, I say, that's it, you know. You got to where you work and I'm gonna retire. <laughs> so I did. <laughs> Uh, when we moved here, you know, the old inside of me, when I was a little kid, I always longing to have a garden. The seed was planted when I was born, I guess. So uh, because of that, uh, the place that we stand here, it was just a jungle, Georgia jungle, jungle. covered with uh, thorns and uh, bees and all kind of thing here, pies and sweet gum and such. Uh, the tree was all the way to our house. So bit by bit, I personally, <laughs> six months after we move in, <laughs> it's funny, but it's not. <laughs> uh, I was down here with the little chainsaw that we had long time ago, teeny tiny one like this. Uh, start cutting tree after tree and then I learned that the more I cut the ugliest look. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so I realized that oh I can't stop now. <laughs> so, so I just keep cutting, cutting, cutting about three months later. <laughs> Mini tree was down. So I didn't clear it up. So we have people come in and they look at it and say, uh, I, I show to them what I did, and, uh, and then they look at me like that, so they, Ram, what did you do? You could have killed yourself, you know? So I have to interject here. So when we first came to this garden, Ram had already done her dastardly deeds. She'd been cutting yeah. things down, but she'd been yeah. putting things in to be sure. But she had done so many wonderful things, and she had done so many things wrong. Wrong meaning, not that she didn't love her plants, but she would stick things in and all of a sudden they'd take over the world, right? And, and it was a great place to bring my students on to see the beauty, it really was. Yeah. But I said, you know, maybe you don't want to put that plant in your garden. Uh, we had to identify it, of course. But then, you know, over time, Ram is a spectacular gardener. Mm -hmm. um, she says she doesn't know what she's doing, but she really does. And it's really based on experience, isn't it? Because yes. wh wh where did you grow up? Yes. I uh, grew up in Thailand. OK. Um, my family was really poor. Um, ooh, <laughs> ooh, <laughs> ooh, yeah. ooh, oh. The old days, yes. The, the old days, yes. Uh, my mother had about 12 children all together. 
I was the third or fourth one. I don't remember anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, when you watch the show or some kind of news overseas, you see a lot of children that this is not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I understand. That, uh, that running around looking for food. You're one of them. I was one of them, yes. Yeah. Well, okay. how fortunate <laughs> we are that you found us. Look, right, I'm sad, <laughs> but I'm not. I'm, I'm not sad. No, no, I'm, I'm no. not sad. I, I'm just so... I feel like it was a great fortunate that... Uh, my life land here to do what I love most is to grow plant to to remind myself that um, being poor it 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 is not a, at all a victim. It's the, the core of teaching us to appreciate more, to love more, to uh, create more, because many don't, because we can't, we do, and then we share. So while I was building this garden, that thought was in my mind, that was the bottom of the passion that I did not want to um, ever be that way. And my, my heart was saying, I can't help all the poor children in the world, but I can help just a little bit, <laughs> you know, by using what we work hard to achieve and then develop the thing that we can share and they keep on sharing and share and share. So no. see, seeing students here, what part of that passion for me, if I can share it a little bit, learn a little bit, give a little bit. And today, you know, I'm just so happy to, to keep on sharing. And your, <laughs> your, story, your, story, your story is amazing, truly. <laughs> <laughs> and we are so fortunate that you found us because she has been sharing and it's fun to share together and uh, you know who we are who we were yes. uh you know it's just part of our lives and uh so here we are today and oh my we are sharing again yes so thank you okay so ram we're going to just do a little walking now why don't you tell okay. us about some of the things you've been doing oh okay uh July, I said, you know, when I start cutting, cleaning, when, when everything is out, and uh, I uh, realized that building garden, you need to build the trail. So the trail that you see here, built by me, and... Uh, so you put all these stones yes, in yourself? And, yeah, you need to and, put all these stones <laughs> myself, plant, did plant. Then they're not a whole lot, but, but now they uh, develop. One of the reasons I learned that um, when you build a trail with no concrete or anything on the bottom, you need to put a lot of plant, which is just what I did, you know, to give them some foundation. And then did waterfall right here. Uh, the reason I built that because I, I, I like this because I wanted to have a lot of sow, a lot of because this is like a, I. I I kind of visualize that uh, this is natural little jungle. <laughs> well, the thing too is you've you got your yeah. jungle plants, don't you? I mean, yeah. the carrots look like exactly. little trees here yes. and there. Yes. And by the way, people are looking at this, you know, water features are wonderful things to have in the yeah. garden. I don't know, Ram, you, but yeah. you've been working real hard on these water yeah. features to make sure they continue to run. Yeah. But the plant material will just make that water feature yeah. just so much more yes. natural. So, yeah. and carrots is a great, a great plant. If you're not sure what to use, yeah. that's a good place to start. The other things will fill in. That's, yeah. that's beautiful. Come on. And, and, and Bill by me and then one guy. We, right. start the, we started here because it, it was 
the, the water just kind of puddle here when the rain you're watching around here. And I decided that to build the pond here and create the sound for all of these uh, surrounding. So it, it, it works really well. It's really terrific. So, and again, one of the things you seem to do is you have a lot of containers yes. of plants everywhere. I mean, everywhere you go, and lovely containers, I may add. And yes. so that's part of your um, part of your vision as well, isn't it? Yes. Cool. Part, cool. part of what learning and going. Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing is, too, don't forget that containers don't have to just be on a deck. You know, containers can be in the middle of your garden. Uh, and, you know, if you want to have ornamental and beautiful containers like Ram has, that's great. Yeah. But containers give the gardener the ability to use decent soil, to control the water, etc. So you can use a container anywhere, and even if you have some things you want to bring in, it's great. And, that's what and, done. and what I learned too, uh, you don't have to fill up on a container. Uh, what I learned was in there in the winter, the time like that, it's cold. It's a lot of um, insects yep. live in there like earthworms and you know other things that uh, they, that's kind of like their home, they, 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 they shelter, sort well, of. Well, Ram, Ram's Garden has also become a mecca for birds, bees, butterflies, and all those good things we want to keep in the garden because, <laughs> let's face it, a garden isn't just for us. We're creating an environment and we're creating an ecosystem. Ram, here we are again walking on one of your many paths. I can't imagine yes. it. You know, you didn't have a, a, a bit of a, a sore back and sore hands doing this, but congratulations, that's great. And of course, this has been here for quite some time. Yes. Uh, it's always nice to walk under something as well, but you, as a gardener, have perhaps evolved a little bit, have changed the way you look at the garden. Um, just to sort of fill us in a little bit on how <clears throat> you see a garden today. Okay. Uh, let, let's go back a little bit in order to tell for today. Uh, when I first started, I was so freaky about leaf and such, you know, when in the fall, when the leaf fall, I was literally standing here trying to catch the leaf because <laughs> I don't want them to fall in the garden. So my vision of creating in the garden, it's for us. And I kind of forgot that I totally uh, nature is surrounding us. I, at the time that I go and then learn doing all the pattern and all those things, it's just like a meditative. For me, I learned that uh, one day I went to the store, I had a cellular that had problem with insect. So I went and got this uh, synthetic chemical that put on a cellular and then we kill the leaf, protect the leaf from being eaten by, by the insect. So I sprinkled that chemical around the cellular or roses and I looked down, there was the earthworm crawling right out from that and just kind of rolled out and died right in front of me. So from that point, my whole body woke up and said, oh, what are we killing? Then I begin to understand, you know, if you kill insect on the plant, you kill worm too. You, the bird eat it, the bird die too. And we think we kill one thing, but I think we kill a lot more. So from that point on, I make a pack pack it myself that I would do the best that I can to do chemical free, uh, killing free <laughs> if I could. <laughs> no killing. Yeah, but it, it, it takes a while to change from using a uh, synthetic chemical and start to kill off the insect back to the ecosystem. Then I'm beginning to learn about what is ecosystem. So ecosystem is require plant whatever plants plant a lot. <laughs> That's why I did, did the garden like a jungle. To let them balance it out, to let them grow. And they said, if you do that, you know, the insect gonna live and then they are gonna kill off other insects naturally by itself. So from that point on in this garden, I, I almost did not use any chemical at all. If I can help it, I would not use any Roundup, anything like that. And uh, the only, what they call synthetic is asthma code that I use to feed them <laughs> once in a while. And I mulch a lot. So well, that's the how idea that you evolved. planted so much. And you and I both know, and it, uh, you know, if the plants are healthy, yeah. you know, the good insects are going to be there, yes. the good stuff, and a few yeah. of the quote unquote bad guys, but yes. the healthier the plant is, mm -hmm. you know, 
the fewer the bad insects yes. and the aphids and yes. the mealy bugs and all that stuff are going to be around yep. because the plant is outgrowing them. Yes. We just got to learn that. We don't need any of these chemicals. First no. of all, half of them don't work against what you're spraying them for anyway. Yes. And then, as you say, you're, yeah. you're, doing, you're making a mess of the whole planet. So yes. good for you. So what you've seen here is just a very brief walkthrough and only a small amount of it. I'm just going to have, you saw lots of B-roll. As, um, as Dr. A and Ram were having a conversation about this beautiful garden. I plan on coming back at some point and doing a more, my more traditional kind of detailed, you know, ID of the things that you're seeing uh, in this. But I, I don't think it needs anything else, does it? <laughs> well, this is just this is a lovely garden. And it is. A, lo a lovely personality. Yes, yes. Uh, she's, this she's garden great. is her personality, quite right. truthfully. Right. And uh, we're just fortunate you know to be able to share this with everybody yeah. and uh, yeah we can yeah, you we she this id thing we have a ball i can't tell you how many plants are here oh it's over a thousand taxa uh, that's really? my that's my guess over yeah, a thousand yeah, yeah. Uh, over a thousand probably uh, I mean, and it's... uh and we can see that here in november and come back in mm -hmm. april or may my goodness right. my friend uh, <laughs> we will be wonderfully right. overwhelmed one of the things i talk about frequently and, and so do you is about having a 12 month garden yeah. when these japanese maples which are we've we've, we've missed peak color you're not seeing peak color here I, i'm a week or so yeah, late on bit. peak color but even when they drop their leaves it's not like those japanese maples are <laughs> uh, <laughs> are going to uncover something <laughs> ugly they're yeah. you know they're beautiful yeah. with or without leaves all the bamboo uh yeah. this gold yeah. bamboo that yeah. i can't even film very well because it's so it's bright so over golden, here right, yeah it's right. so golden but there's a ton of winter interest in this yeah. garden. It's not like this garden is not a, this garden doesn't need to be shot. It can be shot 12 months out of the year. And just behind us is the black stem bamboo. So that's yeah. the color. When these yeah. jobs, like this red ribbons, when it loses its foliage, it has gorgeous form. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I you know, it's, 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 it's a labor of love, but it is a labor to be sure. I'm in, I'm in someone's <laughs> garden right now. And within 30 feet of where I'm standing, there are four waterfalls <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, like, like, like your entire front yard or my entire front yard would be waterfalls that's right that's right <laughs> like if yeah, we did I mean, this. Yeah, but, but you know again that's that's the yeah. personality of the gardener creates a personality of the garden yeah and she yeah. loves her water she loves her she, yeah. you know, i mean thailand she's gonna have her bamboo for sure no i don't yeah. want to tell you and she'll be the first to admit when we first came here this bamboo was everywhere uh, i mean everywhere and she had to really yeah. do some major major reconstruction to keep it under control yeah so she's and, uh, she's got a concrete got barrier a concrete holding around that around it, and that's how she's doing it so in case you're wondering why this isn't everywhere it used to be everywhere yeah. but now she's got it under control right. and there's other fabulous things even even the the ground orchids the bleatillas mm -hmm. um they have fall color yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. really they're it's all amazing. golden yeah uh, it's they're amazing. a little brownie golden but it's, it's all it's all fun so that's what this garden's all about yeah well awesome well thank you for for, for leading me <laughs> leading me over here and uh, I didn't realize it would end up being somebody who's watched some of my videos so you know it was like you know it's all been so exciting this morning uh, so anyway thank you doctor thank you and, Jim as uh, always good fun yeah back in Athens soon I'm sure yeah thanks for watching bye-bye <laughs>